Good morning, everyone. So lovely to be together, even if we're in different places. I've uh, been working on Zoom um, for almost six months now, so I've actually gotten used to the feeling of I'm really communicating with people and it feels very present. So I, I feel all of your presence and it's, it's a beautiful thing that we can still gather together, even though we're separated physically. So if you would just close your eyes and just notice the fact that you're breathing without doing anything to change how you are breathing. Just notice the sensations of the breath. And you might just think the breath is actually the Holy Spirit. The breath is what enlivens me. The breath is the breath of God. With every breath, I absorb the energy of the Spirit. With every breath, I know my unity with God. Then also notice your emotions, whatever emotional experience is going on with you. There is all sorts of intensity in the world and in people's individual lives in this very protracted and deeply challenging time of transformation. So you cannot help be, but be experiencing emotions. So just notice them without judgment, with loving curiosity. And notice that you experience your emotions in the body. There will be places of tightness and agitation and tension and in heat and cold, tingling. Just notice that you are an integrated body-mind system. And as you tune your awareness into the truth of your life, please visualize the maternal aspect of God. God the mother who nourishes us with an infinite tenderness and experience the living waters of God washing through your body mind washing away toxins, cleansing every cell, cleansing all of us of every thought of fear and illness. And just sit in that state of breathing the breath of God and feeling the cleansing waters of the mother. And I'm going to read to you a passage from the uh, teaching that came through me a couple of weeks ago in my monthly online um, channeled uh, spiritual teaching group. Dearly beloveds, it is always with joy that we join together. You know by now that we are always with you. We have much less need to try to convince you of this truth. You are feeling it in your hearts, the impossibility that you could ever be alone. This brings us great joy as well, because you are ourselves. We are all the one unified creation, the extension from the heart of the mother father source, the creator God, who in her great benevolence extended creation so that creation might come to know itself also as divine. So we delight that you are so far along the path of knowing your true divinity. The more of the apparently separated pieces of the child of God are aware of their true divinity, the more the ecstasy amplifies in those of us who are also already aware of our true divinity. Bliss is infinite. Ecstasy is infinite. You have all had glimpses of bliss and ecstasy, but you truly have no idea what it means to live in that state in eternity. This is where we reside. And as you come closer and closer to joining us, the experience of bliss and ecstasy amplifies. So truly, our delight does increase as your confidence in your true nature increases. 
just rest in knowing that bliss is your true state of being. Though it may be hard to believe, when you are identified with your true nature, you walk in bliss on the earth. The native peoples of the Northern Hemisphere of the Americas described this as walking in beauty. Beauty before me, behind me, above me, below me, to my right, to my left, all around me. The universe of beauty is the state of being in harmony with the music of creation. Just picture yourselves walking on the earth in that state of perfect harmony with creation. You can feel it as a vibration of bliss that begins in the soles of the feet and grows up through the legs and all the way through the body, through the arms and into the head. Picture yourselves walking on the earth in this state of bliss and you will notice that your heart feels very large and you cannot help but extend love in this state of blissful awareness of your unity with creation. Bliss is the state of happiness exponentially increased because there is no doubt. There is nothing unresolved in the mind and one can live in the perfect state of bliss. Some of you have experienced this state when the thinking mind ceases. Some of you have been given experiences of traumatic moments when you thought you would die and the thinking mind ceases and what is there is the ecstasy of bliss. When you have these moments of awe-filled happiness and a tenderness that cannot be named, then you know that you are beginning to experience bliss. And all you need to do is to release any thought of separation, fear, judgment, all these things that you are aware of. And your happiness will increase and you will have moments of bliss, which we might describe as distilled happiness, happiness that has been purified of any blemish. And what results are these beautiful drops of bliss that when they touch your crown and your third eye and your heart and all of your chakras, you cannot even use words to name the experience. Do not pursue happiness. It comes to you spontaneously. And anytime fear arises, hold it in loving tenderness and ask that it be dissolved and picture it being washed away by the living waters of the mother. And then return to that state of the bliss of motherly love that you have for yourself and for all beings. And so it is. Good morning, Unity family. It's really a joy to be able to uh, teach, share my, the wisdom that's given to me with all of you when there's a fifth Sunday. And there's a fifth Sunday this month. So I'm going to um, continue with reading some of the teaching that came through me a couple of weeks ago in my online group. And then I'm going to share some about my personal experience with this teaching. My friends, it is beautiful when humanity works to improve the conditions for other people and animals and plants and minerals and waters and the air. But truly, what produces harmony on the earth plane is walking in beauty, walking in the state of bliss. It is of primary importance for you to know that your fundamental relationship is with your creator. We have said to you many times that you cannot exist without the energy <clears throat> that your creator supplied to you in her creation, in her extension of love and joy. When you know that your primary relationship is with your creator, then everything else flows from that. Your heart is full and overflowing constantly, and you cannot help but engage in acts of love and kindness. 
So the primary practice is to know your oneness with God. Your great teacher, Yeshua, modeled this. He spent many years practicing his unblemished unity with God so that when he returned, there would be no doubt about his true identity. And you are all aware that he needed time away from the egoic energies of fear and control in order to maintain the clarity of his connection with God. So my friends, it is not some secondary spiritual pursuit to sit in meditation and breathe in your knowing that the breath is the breath of God. It is that practice that then gives you the experience of love that you then move through the world expressing. If you are called to sit in meditation for a long time and disengage from the world, then that is perfect for your path. If you are called to sit in meditation for brief periods of time and move among your sisters and brothers, that is perfect for your path. But always take time to be in quiet communion with God, your source, and then you will know what to do or not do. In this time of great transformation, the temptation is to engage with all sorts of projects that are working on healing the planet and healing the consciousness of humanity. The good news is that there are so many of you who are engaged in these projects of healing so that each one of you is only called to do what you are called to do. And you can know that everyone else who is also yourself is called to do their part. So do not get distracted by trying to do too much or pulled down by guilt that you are not doing enough. Your part is exactly what is required of you. It is a very helpful practice to look on your sisters and brothers, including your animal sisters and brothers, and know that they are also yourself. And simply say to yourself, that is an aspect of myself, choosing to have that experience, whatever that experience may be. And if it looks like a loving experience, then that feels blissful. If it looks like a fearful experience, just know that that is an aspect of yourself exploring fear. You have all explored fear. In this family, you are aware that that is not your identity. But when you see a sister or a brother who is caught in their belief that fear is their identity, simply affirm, that is myself, exploring the idea that I am fear. And I hold myself in love and tenderness and in the truth that fear is a passing experience that has been chosen in order to know who I truly am. So when I come home to God, there is no possibility that there is any other path that holds interest anymore because all of the paths have been explored. And now the path is a path of unity, which in a great and beautiful paradox is of course infinite. When you can hold your sisters and brothers in this way, then you can easily release any judgment. And you all do know that judgment is the great separator. Judgment is the thought, that person is separate and different from myself. When you know that is myself, choosing that experience, then a great peace will come over you. If you would, picture the great consciousness of humanity, the great consciousness of the animals and the insects, the great consciousness of the plants, the great consciousness of the waters, the great consciousness of the rocks, of the earth, the great consciousness of the atmosphere, and feel in your body, in your heart, that that is your self. There is no separation between what you have formerly thought of 
as your separated self and all of the other aspects of this consciousness, which is in fact your true self, feel the great relief that washes over you knowing there is no separation. I am in love with all aspects of the self that is the universal child of the creator, source, God. And we remind you again of the angelic realm, that aspect of consciousness that never tried on the thought, I am separated from God. The angelic realm is that aspect of consciousness that has always known I am an extension of God, and therefore I am in unity with all aspects of creation, even those that appear to believe that they are separated. So the angelic realms live in bliss and harmony always, and have a great desire that those aspects of the self of the child of God that believes they are separated will come to know what the angelic realm has always known, which is the consciousness of the child of God is forever in harmony. So when I do these um, gatherings, um, this initial teaching comes through and then um, the uh, wise teacher that I'm speaking um, opens the floor for questions. And they're always beautiful and the answers are profound. So uh, uh, one sister later on asked a question about how to find peace because her body was feeling agitated and her emotions are feeling fearful and she's not trusting God. So if you would um, experience, this, there's a practice that's taught. So practice this along with her as you listen to this response. My sister, please start at the beginning of your life and go through each age and remember what you were doing. Who were the people around you, your school, your family, your friends? And at each age, ask yourself, when did I have a moment of knowing the truth of love? When did I have a grandparent who looked at me with kindness? When did I have a teacher who saw my creativity? When did I see a bee pollinating a flower? When did I feel the breeze caress my face? Especially look at your teenage years when your heart is full of excitement about what's possible and your mind is suddenly expanded and you realize there is so much more going on here that the mind is an infinite place. And notice those memories of longing for something more a larger horizon, a sense that there is something possible, there's something waiting for you. When you are a teenager, that is more so experienced as a spouse and children and a home and the feeling that a new life as an adult is waiting for you. But that feeling of some home waiting for you is the fundamental feeling that the soul has of my home in God is waiting for me. So we are asking you to bring up into your consciousness those experiences of knowing you are loved, seeing beauty, and longing for the beauty of home. When you can amplify those experiences and know that they all have the seed of truth in them, then you can hold your fear in love. My sister, you have been paying lots of attention to fear and pain and not enough attention to those memories of knowing the truth of love. So you might find a friend who you feel safe with and just sit and hold their hand and share with them these moments of grace that you have experienced throughout your life. There is a tearfulness that happens when you know there is truth in your longing for knowing that you are loved. 
And then the teaching closed with this. Dearest sisters and brothers, you will notice that in the community today, there is ever more trust in the truth of your spiritual nature. It cannot be that you manifest experiences on the material plane if it is not true that you are the child of God. You are understanding that your very existence is proof of God. Your very existence that you have manifested yourself here is proof of your infinite creativity. That you are noticing that your loving thoughts produce physical loving experiences is very powerful because of course your fearful thoughts have been producing fearful experiences in what has felt like an endlessly self-reinforcing hall of mirrors that you have not known how to escape. There is always the key to escape this self-reinforcing thought that fear produces suffering. You have to look for the clues, those moments of bliss and grace, to know that your thoughts of love and peace and trust also produce physical experiences. So do not discount those as your imagination or wishful thinking. When you do have the manifestation of loving experiences on the earth plane, that is cause for celebration, that you are aligning your will with the will of God, which is for your happiness. So please go forth and notice every little experience of beauty, harmony, grace, peace, and bliss. You are getting closer to your true state of awareness, which is bliss. Bliss is not overwhelming. Bliss allows for the desire to create beauty. Please notice every experience of beauty, bliss, harmony, grace, and extend your gratitude and your loving confidence in these experiences into the matrix of the awareness of the child of God. Picture, if you would, all of the people around the world who are practicing awareness of beauty. You might picture it as flowers growing out of a desert. These moments are the truth that you are loved by God forever and ever and ever. Dearly beloved sisters and brothers, please go forth into the world knowing that you can trust God. Please sit in your meditations and practice trusting God. We remind you that we have taught you about the maternal quality of God that she has infinite tenderness and infinite nurturing and infinite confidence in your ability to grow into who you are so she can step aside and allow you to blossom. Dear ones, please feel in your hearts the resonance of the angelic realm that is always singing. Please notice the infinite colors and patterns and beauty. When you walk upon the earth, also notice the sounds and the colors and the beauty and know that all is well. All is well. All is well. And we are with you forever because we are you forever. So I would like to share a little bit about my personal experience interacting with these teachings. First of all, when I first started doing this, what I called channeling, my own consciousness was having a little argument with it the whole time. And I would like to say that has stopped. And I now know that this is my true self speaking, which is not my self. I experience it as alignment with the child of God. Um, and that sense of confidence and grace is very um, peaceful. Um, and um, I will not say that I am in any way enlightened. So obviously there's still stuff 
happening. And um, one thing that happens a lot is that I'm a very sensitive person. Um, for those of you who are astrologers, I'm a double Pisces, which means that um, I was born on the new moon when the moon and the sun were aligned. So I have both sun and moon in Pisces, um, which means I feel everything very intensely, um, emotionally and in my body. Um, that can feel overwhelming. Um, it also allows me to listen very clearly to the voice of the Holy Spirit. So I in no way regret my choice to be a deeply sensitive person. Um, however, one thing I've been experiencing lately is that the state of the poisoning of the earth and of global warming, producing global warming, as well as the assault that continues to go on on women and children and people who have darker skin tone um, is um, experienced by me physically as digestive problems. I feel this so deeply that I literally feel sick to my stomach. Um, and so I'm very often in the middle of the night in pain because I'm processing all of this um, fear and violence um, deeply in my physical being. So I'm very aware that um, past hurts can only be healed if they're brought up into awareness and then held in love. Um, you can't heal something if you're not aware that it needs healing. Um, and that being healed in love is in the context of a loving relationship. And if that's with a, a partner or a friend or a therapist or a spiritual teacher, it's all ultimately in relationship with the Holy Spirit, with God, with the great enlightened ones, whoever you feel as your own personal guide. Um, it can only ultimately be healed as a spiritual relationship healing. So I know that when I fully trust God, then I am grateful for whatever I'm experiencing, including being chronically sick to my stomach, um, because I know it's being offered to me for healing. Um, in this life, as well as previous lives, we have all accumulated a huge residue of trauma, or at least of um, unloving habits. So there's lots that needs care and attention, you might say. And I know that when I don't fully trust God and I'm resisting what I'm experiencing and I'm saying this shouldn't be happening, this isn't okay, um, all I know is that it's still happening and now I'm piling on resistance and making it stronger. And only when I say, okay, I accept, this is happening, I know this is so, then I know what needs to be done to heal it. So I found for myself personally that one obstacle to healing is the thought that I'm too far gone, I'm a lost cause, this pattern is so deep in me, how can I change it? Um, so this sensitivity that I have of taking on everything and feeling it intensely, how am I ever gonna change that? Um, I'm always gonna feel the pain in the collective consciousness. And uh, likewise, I can say that about society. It's too far gone. The patterns of fear and hatred are so deep and so old. Millennia, humanity has always been fighting each other. All the how is that ever going to change? Um, but I know that just as an individual experience, unless something comes up, it can't be healed. So the same thing's true in the collective consciousness. Um, it has to come up for us to heal it. Um, so I was um, in meditation last night and asking, what is this that's coming up that's just so painful? I don't need to even put it into words. We know what I'm talking about. What is this besides just fear and hatred? How do I hold that in love? And it struck me that the teaching that had just come through about that we're all longing for home and it was so beautiful, that teaching about when you're a teenager, you have that feeling of oh, my adult life and I'm going to have a wonderful spouse and I'm going to have a great career and I'm going to do what I want and I'm going to create my own life. That is the soul's longing for God, for our home in God. And I thought, you know what? 
all of this, um, and because uh, let me say this, I look at people who are following leaders, either political or spiritual, who are um, clearly leading people down the path of fear and hatred. And, and they're promising, if you follow us down the path of fear and hatred, you're going to get something great. And I think, how can humanity be so benighted as to actually believe that? And it struck me that the kernel of truth in there is this longing for home that's distorted through the thought that I'm a separated self and I have to protect this self. So I'm longing for something that I know is there in my heart, but I have to protect myself in order to get it. And I don't want to release this thought that I'm a separated self. So it's that combination of I'm longing for something great, but I have to protect myself that produces this, this hatred. And the leaders feed right into that, you know, follow me and you can keep your ego. You can get everything and still be an ego. But, you know, that's quite attractive to the ego. And there's spiritual leaders who also promise that, you know, come to this mega church and nobody will ever get sick, you know, because you have something magic. And of course, there are some people who won't get sick, who have a deeper knowing of their truth. Um, but there's also a distortion in there, this magic promise of if you follow moi, the great leader, then, you know, you'll get some great reward. Um, really, all that's saying is you get to keep your ego. Um, so if I can see in people who are following harmful leaders and harmful thought systems that hatred is going to get you something, um, if I can see in there my own longing for home in God mixed in with my fear that I'm a lost cause and I can never get there, then I can see, oh, that is an aspect of myself experiencing that experience and I, the judgment falls away. A true spiritual teacher will say, the only way to receive the reward of knowing your unity with God is to relinquish your idea of separation. My father and I are one, and I am nothing without the father. Now, Yeshua probably didn't use the word father. He probably used a word that connoted a unity experience of masculine and feminine. So you've heard that teaching before. That's what it means. In order to know your unity with God, you have to let go of any thought that you are something separated from anything else. I experienced this as very emotional because that's who I am. When I trust God fully and there's nothing else that I want, it makes me weep. Um, and I have had this affirmation that I only want God for many years. And I think I've attained it. And then another layer comes up of something that I'm attached to that I need to let go. Um, and it still happens. Um, and right now I'm attached to the thought that I have this physical condition and I can never let it go. But even preparing this message, I can feel that letting go. So in closing, I just would like to reread the end of the teaching that I read before because it's so beautiful. Dearly beloved sisters and brothers, please go forth into the world knowing that you can trust God. Please sit in your meditations and practice trusting God. We remind you that we have taught you about the maternal quality of God, that she has infinite tenderness and infinite nurturing and infinite confidence in your ability, ability to grow into who you are so she can step aside and allow you to blossom. 
Dear ones, please feel in your hearts the resonance of the angelic realm that is always singing. Please notice the infinite colors and patterns and beauty. When you walk upon the earth, also notice the sounds and the colors and the beauty and know that all is well. All is well. All is well. And we are with you forever because we are you forever. Amen. Amen. Amen.